Example number two says use the given point on the terminal side of the angle to find the exact value of the six trig functions. Okay, so what on earth does that mean? We are given the point positive 16, negative 12. Remember, we can put angles in the coordinate plane, so that's what has happened here. Um, now, I'm going to draw the entire coordinate plane, but I'm going to kind of offset it because I know that this point, positive 16, negative 12, is in the fourth quadrant. Okay, positive 16, negative 12 is in the fourth quadrant. So this is what it's talking about. It's saying, here's your point. That creates an angle. And really, for our purposes, it's going to create a right triangle. And this is how it works. You want to draw that side. Okay, your angle always is formed with the closest horizontal axis. So in this case, it's the positive horizontal axis, okay? Never make it with the vertical axis, okay? Never create the angle with the vertical axis. It's always either with the positive x-axis or with the negative x-axis. And then we can create a little right triangle here, okay? If we drop down a line from the positive x-axis, we end up with a little right angle right there. Now let's label this triangle. If that point out there is the point, positive 16, negative 12, then that means that its x-coordinate, or its distance along the x-axis is 16, its distance along the y-axis is negative 12. So we need to find its hypotenuse. Now these are going to be easier because it's always just um, a squared plus b squared. Now, two things. Since that y-coordinate, or that b, or whatever you want to call it, is negative, you need to do one of two things. Either put parentheses around the negative 12 before you square it, or just don't even put the negative. Okay? Don't even put the negative when you put it in your calculator, because you know that a negative number squared is supposed to give you a positive, but if you don't put the parentheses around it, then it gives you a negative number. So I wouldn't even put it in there, because it will mess up your answer. Okay, it will mess up your answer. Um, we get 400. Well, the square root of 400 is 20. <clears throat> so um, that's what we're going to put in there. And I'm just double checking myself, even though I know. All right, so that's 20. Let's find our trig functions. Okay, so sine is the opposite, negative 12 over the hypotenuse, 20. You can reduce it if you really want to. I'm not quite sure if the answer key reduces them or not. I'll have to look at that. Uh, cosine is the adjacent 16 over the hypotenuse, 20. Tangent is the opposite, negative 12 over the adjacent, 16. <clears throat> um, something that I might suggest to you, and I haven't really been doing it uh, so far, is label your sides. Okay, label them. Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. That way, it just that's one more way to kind of get it in your brain. Cosecant, just flip it over. Now, when you flip it over, though, we don't want negatives in the denominator, so just go ahead and slide that negative up to the numerator. So make it negative 20 over 12. Secant, 20 over 16. Cotangent, negative 16 over 12. And I promise you it'll work out in the end. Okay, let's do one more like that. Let's look at negative 5, positive 3. Well, negative x, positive y, that lands us in the second quadrant. And it is wider than it is tall. Angle is always created with the horizontal axis. Right angle is always created with the horizontal axis. So negative 5 is our x, positive 3 is our y. <clears throat> 9 plus 25 is 34, so that means our hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 34. 
the hypotenuse will always be positive. Okay, your legs, one of them or both of them can be negative, but your hypotenuse will always be positive. All right, so our sine ratio, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to label the opposite is 3, the adjacent is negative 5, the hypotenuse is the square root of 34. So the sine is 3 over the square root of 34. If we rationalize that, it's going to be 3 square roots of 34 over 34. Okay, 3 over 34 does not simplify. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Negative 5 over the square root of 34, that also needs rationalizing. So negative 5 square roots of 34 over 34. I'm just going to show the work. Okay, it happens the same way every time. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. And again, we don't want that negative in the denominator. So even though the 5 is the technically the negative number, we put the negative with the 3 in the numerator. Reciprocal functions. As I mentioned before, uh, don't flip over the rationalized version. Go back to the original and flip that over. Your square root won't be in the denominator, so the cosecant is the square root of 34 over 3. The secant would be the negative square root of 34 over 5. And the cotangent is negative 5 over 3. <coughs>